Hello and welcome to this quick video tutorial on how to use the Math Mesh add-on for Blender 2.8. I'll just quickly cover how to install the add-on. If we go to Edit Preferences and in this add-on section we've got a list of all the currently available add-ons. We've got Math Mesh down here but I'm just going to turn that off for the moment. What you would need to do to begin with is you will have to go to the GitHub website for the Math Mesh add-on and I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. And if you download the zip file of the master branch from that GitHub page and you store that zip file on your computer, then you can simply use this install button here to navigate to that zip file, double click on the zip file and you will find hopefully that in the mesh section down here we will have the math mesh add-on option and if we click on this little square that um, add-on is now available within blender so that's fine so i've just got a uh, default blender scene here the math mesh add-on requires us to be in edit mode and it requires exactly two vertices to be selected. So I'm just going to go into edit mode here. I'm going to get rid of these edges and I'm going to select two vertices. Now the keyboard shortcut for Math Mesh is Alt Shift M. And when I press Alt Shift M, I get between my two vertices a curve, a mathematical curve. This curve is defined by the options in the operator panel, which might look like this to begin with, but you can expand it with this little triangle. And these options are live. Until we do another operation within Blender, these options are live. So if I change the type of curve from a sine curve to a circular curve, for example, that change is updated in real time. I might just change my plane that I'm drawing on like that. So yeah, we've got two different types of curve, circular and sine. Circular in effect creates semicircles, sine creates a conventional sine wave. Um, we can specify the number of curves and a curve in the Math Mesh add-on is every time we go above and below the zero line. So one, two, three, four, five. We've currently got five curves. We can go down to one, and we can go up as much as our computer's memory will allow. We can also specify a number of vertices per curve. So one vertex per curve would give us a straight line. When we start to get higher resolution, as we add more vertices in. We can also set the amplitude of the curve. So I just reduce my curve number down a little bit. Maybe increase my number of curves a bit. Um, there are two different types of amplitude. Amplitude controls how high and how low the curve goes. We can either have a relative amplitude, so the height is relative to the dimensions of the curve or the width of the curve. And if we're in relative mode, then if we set an amplitude of one, we'll get either perfect semicircles, if we've got a circular curve, or we will get a perfect sine wave, if we've chosen a sine wave curve. Um, and we can still scale that relative amount as much as we like. If we go to absolute mode, then the amplitude is now absolute in Blender units. So if I go to one, it is now going up and down by one Blender unit. Two Blender units, etc. I could also set a power 
for the positive and negative values. And this just gives us, I suppose, a slightly different way of visualizing the curve. It can flatten it or it can make it more pronounced. One will have no effect whatsoever. And we can also skew the curve either way. And the final option is this alternate. Where if we want all the curves to go either positive or negative, we can use this alternate button. And if we find that doing this, or if you find doing this, you get your curves going in the different direction that you want, you want them going downwards rather than upwards, you can set your amplitude to be negative. Um, I think that's it for the options. Control Z will bring us back out again. I will just demonstrate um, something as well. I'm going to bring one of my vertices down. I'll shift N just to show that if the vector between the two vertices is not horizontal or vertical, um, then the curve will follow whatever the vector is. And in that case, this skew option can be useful because you might want to make the curve still operate in more or less the global Z direction, even though the curve naturally is offset from the global Z direction because of the slant of the original two vertices. Uh, final thing, because the vertices and edges that get created are automatically selected, this can be extruded very easily. I work in the architectural field, so this add-on could be useful for generating uh, curved building surfaces or even corrugated iron roofs, that kind of thing. Anything with a regular mathematical repeating pattern um, it can make life a little bit quicker. Um, and I think that's everything I have to cover. Okay, thanks for watching.